I have a cold, so this is going to be a challenge. Kane is the first vampire. He is also believed to be the most powerful vampire. From the biblical story of Adam and Eve, Cain was the firstborn son and he killed his brother Abel. And because of this act, Cain was cursed by God. All of Cain's childer would refer to themselves as Cainites until the formation of the Camarilla. Most of Cain's history can be found within several books. The Book of Nod is probably one of the most prolific ones. This is a collection of ancient texts that have been found throughout the millennia from Nodist cultists. The Ursai's Fragments, and I'm probably pronouncing that one wrong, so correct me in the comments below. This one focuses around the creation of Cain. Lilith was another very important biblical figure who had significant influence on Cain himself. And there is a book called the Lilithian. This one focuses specifically on the Dark Mother and her Bahari cultists. The Luciferian was also another text that talked about Cain. It puts forth one myth or one creation story that may or may not have happened in the sense that Cain killed his brother, but he had tricked himself into believing that he was doing it as an act of love and not as an act of anger or vengeance. Beckett was a very important not a scholar who is well versed in the history of vampires. He is known largely for piecing together this series of events when it comes to Cain. And while all of the texts that I've mentioned do talk about Cain in some fashion, they all have conflicting stories with one another. So what do we know of Cain's origin story? In the creation story of this, both Cain and Abel were preparing sacrificial offerings to God. Cain was a farmer of the land, so he had fruits, vegetables, and he prepared his absolute finest for the offering. Abel was also a farmer, but he had animals, and this is what he prepared as a sacrifice to God. What is clear is there was a dispute between Cain and Abel as to whose offering was best. What is unclear are some of the events that lead up to this. Was the dispute trying to be resolved between the two brothers, or did God actually favor Abel's sacrifice more than Cain's? The end result of this conflict, no matter what started it, is Abel was sacrificed on the altar by Cain to God as the finest sacrifice that he could make. It then goes on to describe that Cain's father, in air quotes, so this could mean either Adam, who was Cain's father, cursed him, or more likely, it was God who was displeased with his actions that cursed him. And he was cast out of his homeland to walk in the land of Nod. So what is the land of Nod. Well, the Book of Nod tells us that the land of Nod is a place in utter and perpetual darkness. There is no source of light anywhere. Cain wandered this land alone, and Nod, when you translate it, means unknown land. Now, supposedly, these lands were located just outside the Garden of Eden. Now, it doesn't say how long he wandered these lands for, Time gets a little bit hard to calculate in, in these early stages of human history, but it was likely a very long time. And it was in the land of Nod that Cain met Lilith. Lilith called him Cain of Nod, and she took him to her garden. And from here, Cain was fed, clothed. He was even at one point able to convince her to share her magics with him. From Lilith's perspective, she was intrigued by this creature, this man that she ran into in the land of Nod. And she could tell by the dark air around him that he had done something that no other human had done before. Murder. Now, whether you agree with hunting or not, there is usually some respect between the hunter and the prey. Hunters will largely use most of the animal that they have killed. Murder has no real purpose. Previous to this event, only gods could kill. So she took him in and wanted to learn a little bit more about him and this dark power that he possessed. Now, through their interactions, Cain was able to learn of Lilith's power, and he sought her power for himself. It's unclear at the start whether this was just because he wanted to know more, or if he actually coveted and was jealous of her power, but he was able to convince her to prepare an awakening ceremony for him where he did drink some of her blood. The story then goes on to say that Cain, after taking part in this ritual, 
was visited by three angels and given three chances to turn his back on his actions to repent for what he had done. After each visit with the angel, when he rejected their offer, they cursed him and his children even further. Michael was said to have presented the first deal, and upon his rejection, cursed Cain and his childer to fear his living flame. Raphael was next, and when he in turn was rejected, he cursed Cain and his childer that they would fear the dawn. If the sun touched them, it would burn them. Uriel was next. Once he was rejected, his curse forced them to continue to be monsters so that they would only drink blood. Anything that they ate in their mouths would turn to ash, and they would be frozen at the point of death without actually dying. It's then expressed that after this event, a fourth angel appeared, Gabriel, offering Cain a chance at mercy. From this moment, Cain is awakened. He knows all of the disciplines. Celerity, potence, fortitude, obfuscate, dominate, presence, protean, animalism, and auspex. He even becomes aware of the path of blood. Once he has achieved his goal, he understands, is aware of these magics. He severs his ties with Lilith, and he wanders back alone in the land of Nod. Cain wandered these lands with his new knowledge, beating himself up. He was quite sorrowful and pitying himself and just not taking the weight of what he had done very well. And he was here for a long time until he decided he wanted to be around humanity, civilization again. It was at this point that he came out of his wandering, he came out of the land of Nod, he became part of the first city and eventually went on to become the Dark Father. Now before we talk about the Dark Father, if you are enjoying today's video, please let me know by hitting the like button. And if you want to see more World of Darkness content from myself, please hit subscribe with the bell notification. As always, from my loyal viewers, if I have missed anything or have misinterpreted something, please let me know in the comments below. Now although the city that Cain settled in became known as the First City, it was originally a town called Ubar. It was ruled by King Enoch. Many of the people in Ubar were aware of Cain's mark. Some respected it. Some worshipped it. Many feared it. It is also said that once Cain arrived to the city and made himself comfortable, King Enoch relinquished his power, gave up the throne, and let Cain rule instead. Now there is a Toreador legend that talks about an act Cain did trying to set things right. Cain noticed a particular couple. They were lovers. Their love was so powerful that not only did it draw Cain's attention, it drew from him emotions. It made him sorrowful and regretful of the sin that he had experienced and been reminiscing and reliving for centuries, an aeon ago. Cain thought that maybe he could redeem himself if he embraced the lovers so that they could be in love forever together. This is not what happened. After they had been embraced and they discovered that they could not have children together, in the depths of their despair, they both walked into the sunlight and burned to death. The legend finishes off by saying that this event hurt Cain so badly in his soul. He was so heartbroken over the event that he forbid anyone to talk about their names, and their names have been lost to history. Now, the former king of Enoch, he desired Cain's power. He desired it so badly that he frequently pestered Cain, asked him, begged him to let him experience this, to give him his power and teach him his ways. It is said that because of the event of the lovers gone so badly wrong, for decades Cain did not respond or he did not give in to these demands. Eventually Enoch wore him down. Cain then embraced Enoch and created another vampire. From this point on, Cain renamed the city from Ubar to the city of Enoch. Story goes that even after he was turned, Enoch persisted to bother and pester Cain. Enoch was lonely. It was only Cain and himself who shared this great power, and Enoch wanted some brethren. He wanted some brothers and sisters. 
The next person to be embraced by Cain was named Irad. Cain gave him inhumane strength. Now, when we're talking this, vampires already have inhumane strength. This is a inhumane strength rating compared to other vampires. It is very, very difficult to overstate how powerful and physically strong Cain made Irad. Irad eventually came to be the leader of Enoch's armies. The third person to be embraced by Cain was Zilla. Now, it is said that Zilla was extremely beautiful, gorgeous, and Cain desired her. The problem was, after she had been embraced, she did not share those feelings that he had for her. And this frustrated Cain. And this frustrated Cain to a great deal. Cain tried everything that he could think of to make Zilla love him and appreciate him, but nothing worked. Reaching the end of his patience and his frustrations, Cain eventually sought out a crone who tricked Cain into a blood bond with her. Interestingly enough, when this blood bond was discovered by Zilla, it was enough to convince her to marry Cain. The problem was Cain was now blood bonded to this crone, and for a year, he toiled in service to her. Cain had realized that he had been tricked, and in this year of service, year and a day specifically, he devised a plan to trick the crone. He was able to convince her that he was having such terrible dreams, such nightmares, the paranoia was building that his children were seeking his blood. They sought his power, and he was begging her for protection or some way to protect himself against his children. This was not, of course, actually happening. The crone believed him, and she gave Cain a weapon. It was a sharpened stick. A sharpened stick made of gopher wood. Once she had given it to him, Cain turned around and used it on her immediately. He stabbed her, he broke the blood bond between him and her, and then he left her for the sunrise to finish. Now, as time progresses in the first city, the second generation of vampires learned how to create their own progeny, and they started making their own vampires. They created their own childer. Cain eventually had to make an order to stop creating more vampire childer, and for a very long time, this city prospered. Cain was able to bring some of his knowledge around farming. Cain was able to acquire this knowledge because he was a farmer when he was with Adam and Eve, but he would also have been able to gain some gardening know-how from Lilith, considering she had her own. Everything was going great. The city was prospering. It was an economic powerhouse. That was until the Great Deluge. The city was destroyed. The children of Seth, all of the humans living in the city, they were gone. This disrupted Cain so badly, he disappeared. His surviving childer, the second and the third generation vampires, they went seeking for him, looking for his guidance, but he was gone. Now, in his absence, in this power vacuum, the antediluvians, the original clan founders, the third generation vampires, they turned on their sires and they killed the second generation vampires. The antediluvians then went out and built their own city. This was known as the second city. And for a while, things were going absolutely great for them until Cain discovered what they had done. Once Cain discovered that the antediluvians had killed his childer, his second generation vampires, he cursed them. And this is where the clan weaknesses come from that we see today. Cain has not been seen since this event. If you are planning on using him in your games, then may God have mercy on the souls of your players. Even the books describe him as having power outside of the storyteller's system. They say that he can't be contained within their own game system. Because he is the father of all vampires, and he's still two generations more powerful than the Antediluvians, the clan founders themselves, it's not unreasonable to suspect that he will have mastered every single discipline to its highest degree. For a scale of thought on this, take what an Antediluvian can do, and then dial that up to 11, that's what Cain can do. Cain supposedly knows whenever one of his disciplines is used on vampire or human alike, it is also said that he can just, on a whim, disrupt it. Like, nah, 
I don't want you to use that right now and it's not working anymore. But it is also thought from the history that we've been able to piece together that Cain is not an unreasonable person. He was a good ruler. He was an honest, law-abiding king. If your groups were ever planning on fighting Cain, which I hope they don't, there is one thing you should be aware of. It is also said that there is a biblical description that follows Cain. Whatever damage is done to him is returned back sevenfold. And of course, he is permanently marked with the displeasure of God. Now, if you thought Cain was interesting, you may enjoy the video on your screen now. I would like to thank all of my patrons for continuing to support me and the channel. If you wish to become a patron supporter yourself, you can visit Patreon. Link is in the description below. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.